In the previous video, we introduced you to unsupervised learning and we gave you some vocabulary that you need to know, examples, features, and a model. And we treated the model as a black box. In this video, we're going to dive inside that model and see how we actually build it. So we're going to answer the question, how do we build a model that will separate the, in this case, two groups hidden in our data, group one and group two. The algorithm that we're going to discuss in this class is called k-means clustering, and we've chosen it because it's a, an intuitive algorithm that we can really dig into in a detailed way. In this example, we've got two dimensions that these points are laid out in, so there's uh, an x dimension and a y dimension, and each point represents a combination of an x and y coordinate value. With k-means clustering, we're going to ask, are there, is there structure in this data? Are there groups that sort of naturally fall out of the positions in this plane? So to do this, we're going to randomly start with uh, points. And so in this case, we're going to use a k equals 3, which means we're going to start with three random centroids. I'll show these here as these empty circles. So there's an orange centroid, a green centroid, and a blue centroid. And we just randomly place these somewhere in the space of the points. From this random initialization, what we then do is we assign points to their nearest centroid. So here I'll color the points in the color of their closest centroid. This cloud of points is closest to the orange centroid, so they get colored orange. This point is closest to the green centroid, so it gets colored green. And the remainder of the points are closest to the blue centroid, so they get colored blue. Then we're going to move the centroid. So we're going to move the centroid to the center of the points that it covers. In this case, that means now the orange centroid has moved to the center of the orange points, the green centroid has moved to its own point, and the blue centroid has moved to the center of its points. And then we're going to repeat this process. So we're going to remove the labels. So we're going to say, OK, whichever color they were in the past, that's irrelevant now. And then we're going to reassign points to their closest centroid. And then we're going to move the centroids again. At some point, we'll reach a situation where when we run the algorithm another time, nothing changes. And when that happens, we've reached our stopping condition. So this is the point where we finish the algorithm. And when we stop, the places where the centroids are tell us the, the middle of the, the points in that cluster. And the color of the points determines the cluster assignment. So at the end of this algorithm, these four points in the top left have become the orange cluster. And uh, the points on the right side of the screen have become the blue cluster. K-means clustering has been used quite a bit in biology, so here's one example from this paper by Tothill et al. in 2008. We provide a link to this paper in the Sage Math Cloud notebook for this portion of the course, so if you want to take a look at this being used in practice, you can um, feel free to peruse that paper. Now hopefully you can continue through the notebook exercise and see our actual implementation of K-means and follow it line by line to understand how the process that I described in the video is actually implemented in software.